An incorrect way of debunking a myth is the most common way that people do debunk myths. The greatest advances in our understanding of climate change over the last decade haven't come from the physical sciences. A lot of that stuff we've known for a really long time. The new advances have come from the social sciences, education, communication, even marketing studies that have opened the door on the human mind and how it interacts with information, especially information we don't want to know. And the reason why we're 50 years behind in the communication field is we've been busy doing science. Almost every time you see a debunking article or some kind of science publication that's debunking common myths, the headline is myth XYZ. Uh, and then they go into a detailed explanation of, of the facts and, and why the myth is wrong. What that's doing is putting the emphasis on the myth. Remember, Richard Nixon said, I am not a crook, and people thought of him as a crook. After time, all the details fade, and all they can remember is the headline, and you've reinforced the myth. I wrote a book called Don't Think of an Elephant. It makes you think of an elephant, because in your brain, the neural circuits have to activate what you are negating in order to negate it, and that strengthens what you're negating. This backfire effect that you make things worse by mentioning the myth, uh, does occur. It is reported in the literature. It does keep coming up. You know, it is replicable. We should definitely be aware of it when, when we're framing things in headlines, when we're uh, giving interviews on the radio, when we're, you know, tweeting or putting out sound bites or, you know, any kind of situation where the, you have to assume that people are processing the information very superficially. And if you believe that everybody has the same notion of thought and that it's logic, it will follow that if you just tell people the facts, they'll all reason to the right conclusion. Now we know that that keeps being false. The way people learn about things is through stories that other people tell them. You have to use emotion in the way that you talk about things. People respond to emotion. They don't respond to facts. It's not that facts don't matter, they do matter. When I would say the words global warming or climate change, it would be a trigger for a half or more of my audience to just tune out and not listen to the science anymore. So you remove those two words and you just talk about how they're going to be affected as things change and they're much more open to listening. Well, chocolate and champagne, two of our favorite Valentine's Day things, but the future of these two great loves may be in trouble. Rising temperatures, changing rainfall patterns, they're already affecting the areas that they grow in. That's the secret weapon. That's how you get people to care about this. So first of all, we have to connect over a shared value. And then once we have connected on that shared value, then draw the line between what we care about and climate change. Here's why I care about climate change. I care about it because it will make our water even more scarce than it already is. The way to counter a myth isn't just to um, show how it's wrong. You need to identify a factual alternative and, and communicate that first and foremost. What we do is we build mental models of, of how the world works and you can have myths as part of that model. Um, and so a mental model is all the different parts of the world and they're all j linked together by causal relationships. A causes B, B causes C and so on. Now if you debunk a myth, you're reaching into that model and pulling it out and that creates a gap. Suddenly A doesn't create, cause B. There's all these um, broken links and people don't like an incomplete model. They don't like these gaps. You need to replace it with a, a fact that fits all the same relationships. The, the A causes B, the B causes C. It needs to fit those similar causal relationships just as well or even better than the original myth. And so unless you replace that myth with a factual alternative, the myth comes back and continues to influence people. You want to introduce people to the field of climate science, you got to use this, you got to say something like, yeah, this hurts. This is scary. You have to say, hey, I want to ski with my kid in the future. I want to eat salmon in the future. Like, I have a stake in this. I am invested. I am not separate from this. And I do have emotions around this. And I share this with you.